when you're depressed, when you're anxious, when you're, when you're in the deep valley of life, when you're combating a lot of these mental health issues, it's, um, it's hard to know how to get out. Good morning, and welcome back to the video. I am enjoying some time on the deck here before we go to work. It is another glorious Friday. We are officially two weeks out from the 50 mile marathon. I could not be more excited. I was a little nervous last week, but after going through that 30 mile run, I, uh, I'm confident. I'm confident that I'll have plenty of gas in the tank. I've done the preparation, I've run, I've run the runs, and I've checked all the boxes off. And so right now it's just enjoying the deload week, allowing my legs to come back, become fresh, because we were putting a lot of miles on over the last month or so. And it's good, I can already start to feel it, like winding down the miles a bit. The legs are starting to feel a little bit more rejuvenated. So that's a really good sign. So right now I'm uh, enjoying some time on the deck. I have a half day today here on Friday because I'm going down to Saves Suicide Awareness, Voices and Education's uh, global headquarters, which is in Bloomington, Minnesota. So I'm going them to iron out some details for the October marathon, but then also to film some content for them to use, for me to use, to continue to try to blast um, this event, blast this team, try to get people to donate, or to join and run, or a combination of the both. We really want to make a statement during this run and try to make the, the team and, uh, and save uh, the biggest team. And then on Saturday, got I get to do some trail runs. So I have predominantly been doing more road running for this 50 mile trail run. And over the last handful of weeks, I've been slowly getting into the trail, the trail runs just to get acclimated to it. So I got a 10 mile trail run on Saturday. And then on top of that, a lot of housework too. So should be a very productive week or so. Cheers to Friday. We'll see you guys soon. All right, and we made it. We are at Wells Fargo Plaza in Bloomington, Minnesota, which is the headquarters of SAVE. So if I give you guys a quick shot here, their office is all the way up there. So we're gonna go up there, we're gonna go hang out, film some content. It's been a complete team effort so far in the very beginning stages of this, and something I'm looking forward to continue to do as we continue to plan through October. So time to go up and get it started. conversations how you doing what's been going on you seem different lately you stressed because most of those conversations can really help people get through that was awesome I, I can't thank you enough for thank the you. time and again the passion the passion that came from that was was pretty cool it's almost like you've done that before <laughs> yeah I, I do uh, probably a one to two media interviews every day do you really okay with national like, what, what, what that was awesome. Dan is an incredible person. 
He has so much passion around suicide, awareness, prevention, the training, everything that goes into what they're doing. I have another sense of motivation to continue to raise money for these guys and continue to do the best work I can for them just because of the work that they're doing. You can tell that this isn't a job for them, this isn't just a nine to five, and they are committed to bettering the world. All in all, I'm just, I'm over the moon by how that went. I can't thank them enough for spending the time to do that interview. Now that that's done, I am going to go back home, try to get a workout in, but more importantly, I'm gonna do some yard work, so stay tuned for that. All right, change plans. We were going to do a bunch of housework this evening. However, it is too nice of a day, and it is Friday. So we decided to go to dinner instead of house stuff. We'll get that tomorrow, but on our way to one of our favorite breweries here, gonna end the night with a couple beers, a couple friends, maybe a couple wings. We'll see what happens. So that's probably all I got for today. I'll check back in tomorrow uh, on the 10 mile trail run. So have a great night. All right, we made it to Lebanon Hills, which is the one of the one of the public parks near our house. I decided to say screw it. I don't care if it's raining. We're gonna come up. We're gonna go out on the trails and we're gonna enjoy our time. Should be good. I'm gonna go lace up. I'm gonna go log my miles. And I'll see you guys when we get back. Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really want to hurt you But I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side Maybe we could be okay Okay, okay Maybe you could be the change I need today I promise that I've never felt this way I really hope that you Will choose to stay Through all the pain I know you told your friend You're not okay Just like that we Got 10 miles in the bag And... I think, let me check real quick. 9.45 pace. I was I was going a little faster than I was expecting, which is good. Trail runs, I think, I don't really know for sure, but I think with trail runs, the, the expectation is to run a little bit slower than you would, obviously, on the roads. So I felt like I was going at a good pace. My heart rate was really good. I stayed like around the 150, 155 mark, which I thought, again, it was reasonable for the trail that we were doing. Uh, overall, felt really good. All right, so I got this thought that I wanted to quick share. I've been chewing on this for weeks now, and obviously it got heightened yesterday at being at SAVE's global headquarters, sitting down with Dr. Dan, talking to him a little bit about their mission. And then ultimately, on my 10-mile run, this was all, all I was thinking about, so I wanted to get on and share, is this channel is obviously an, a channel to help document you know, the things like the 50-mile training uh, block that I'm going through, document the race, give tips on running, 
and then ultimately document other harder things I'm going to try to do over the next couple of years. But the centerpiece of this YouTube channel is to help promote mental health and ultimately give tips, my advice on how to combat things like depression and anxiety, things that I've gone personally through, and then ultimately I have a lot of experience within my family. On it. And so the overlying question that I've been chewing on is how to beat depression. Right? I think there's, uh, there's so many different pieces of advice, different commentary, professional opinions on it. And I think there's a lot of things that work. And I wanted to give you guys my thoughts in terms of, again, if you are depressed, if you're suffering from things like major depression where we're getting out of the bed is the, you know, is the toughest challenge that you can see. And I've been there. There's been days where it's like I couldn't physically get out of bed because um, I was so depressed. Or things like anxiety, chronic anxiety, where again, it's crippling to the point where you can't go leave the house or so on and so forth. There's a lot of people dealing with a lot of things right now. And I think that we're reducing the stigma, which is fantastic. I think we're increasing conversation, which is tremendous. But I think the one thing that we continue to, we, I think as a whole, can do a better job of is offering solutions. So this is what I wanted to talk to, talk to you guys a little bit about. I have three things that I think can help, or I have, I have one thing that I think can really help combat depression. I have three bullet points on it. So let me, let me first talk a little bit about, I think the basics is if you are struggling with, again, depression, anxiety, or any other type of mental illness, talking about it, whether, especially one with a professional and two with friends and family. Being open and vulnerable about it is not a weakness, it's a strength. Something that I had to learn personally. Um, and honestly, it was one of the things that my father, who ended up taking his life, I think dealt with tremendously on his end, is when you bottle it up, whatever that is that you're going through, if you bottle it up and never speak about it, it's it becomes your reality. Now, I think majority of us, we tell ourselves the stories all the time, and I would say 90% of them are complete bullshit. But if you never talk about it with people, if you never have the opportunity to combat your thoughts with better ideas or reality, it becomes your truth. And if you continue to spiral down that negative um, thought process, if you never have ability to challenge the stuff that you're struggling with, it can consume you. And I can speak from my father's perspective, that's probably what happened with him. So that's number one. Number two is diet and exercise. When I went, I've been to a handful of different therapists in my life, and each and every single one of them unilaterally asked the same following questions right off the bat, is what's your diet look like, how much are you exercising, and how much alcohol and drugs are you consuming on a daily or weekly basis? All three of them. And when you're, when you're at the rock bottom, when you're completely in the valley, and I've been there, again, when you hear someone say like, okay, eat a salad and jog more. I'm like, hey, 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 I can barely get out of bed. A salad and a, and a jog is not gonna fix the chronic pain that I feel on a day-to-day -day level. And obviously, I've gone through it myself now, there is tons of obviously wisdom that comes through that. Dieting and exercising are two cornerstone pieces that have fundamentally changed my life and for the positive. So those are, the, again, those are some of the key staples that I think we've all heard, but they're absolutely true. And I have one more piece that I wanted to talk about. And to me, this is something that I don't think a lot of people talk about, but is the number one thing that has catapulted my life in a trajectory I didn't think was possible, has provided me a confidence level in myself that I never experienced, but has ultimately helped drag me out of that valley, that deep, dark hole that I experienced the majority of my life, and especially after my dad died. And that was doing hard things, especially something physical. So the example, and obviously what a lot of this channel is about, is running. In 2020, I set a New Year's resolution to run a marathon. Not just to run one, but to run the entirety, 26.2 miles, all without stopping. And by doing something like that, where originally I didn't actually think it was physically possible for me to do so, finishing it and completing that changed my life forever. And so I think doing hard things, like a, running a marathon, doing an Ironman, uh, summiting, a mountain, trying to lose 50 pounds, competing in a bodybuilding competition, well, you name it. Something that's super physically hard that you don't think is actually possible. There's three things I think that come with that, that 
bleed into every other aspect of your life and ultimately help you escape the shackles of things like depression and anxiety. So bullet point number one is it expands your perspective of what's possible. Again, I didn't believe that it, I could physically run 26.2 miles. Me personally, I didn't think it was actually possible. And training through that marathon and actually completing the race, finishing all 26.2 miles, running the entire thing, the first initial thought that I had was not how awesome that felt, but was what else is possible. What else could I do? Right, if I could run 26.2 miles, could I do 30? Could I do 50? Could I do 100? Could I run an Ironman? What else can I do? Because if I can do this, I'm pretty sure I can do a whole lot of other things. It was a confidence level in myself I never felt before until after crossing that finish line. So that's number one. Number two is when you're depressed, when you're anxious, when you're, when you're in the deep valley of life, it's hard to know how to get out. It's hard to know what direction to take. Online, I know a lot of people right now are struggling with hopelessness, are struggling with what's my purpose in life? I mean, what am I passionate about? Those are huge, huge questions to try to answer and they're not gonna be solved by sitting on the couch trying to ruminate on them. For me, what I like about training and doing something physically hard, training for something super physically hard, is it narrows your focus. It gives you something to focus on and brings you back to the present. Instead of being lost in your thoughts, training for a marathon where you have daily tasks you have to check off gives you something to focus on. And going through that process of checking the box each and every single day, living life rather than continuing to ruminate on things that you can't solve well, in your head. You can only solve by doing. And the third point is there's daily disciplines that come from training for something physically hard and doing something physically hard that bleeds into every other aspect of your life. So things like discipline, consistency, work ethic, where when I was training for my marathon, I broke down what I had to do on a daily basis. And my goal was not to even worry about the 26.2 miles I had to run at the end of the five months. My sole focus was to check the box off each and every single day. No matter if I had to run at four in the morning before work or after work, or if it was raining or snowing, my total focus was to just check the box each and every single day. And after completing the five month training block, not missing a day, I can promise, I can tell you from experience that like that consistency and that level of planning and those disciplines that I learned through doing that have bled into my work, have bled into my personal life where I'm still not perfect. I'm still trying to adapt these in every aspect of my life, but now I have the blueprint. I have at least experience that I can reflect on of like, hey, when I trained for that marathon, I know that I can be consistent. I know I do. I know I can have discipline because I proved it to myself. And now I can leverage that experience in other aspects of my life. So, this was a long rant, and I don't know if this is going to make it into the entire YouTube channel or this entire episode. But what I did want to say is that I think by doing hard things, physically hard things, things that you never thought were possible, can ultimately catapult and change the trajectory of your life, ultimately help people escape their depression or their anxiety.